Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Martin and I'm working as a software tech lead for a London-based fintech startup. So in today's video, I want to talk to you about how I deal with imposter syndrome and why it's not necessarily to fight with that. So if you're watching this video, I assume that you probably know what imposter syndrome is and you want to find a way to overcome this or how you want to find a way how to deal with that. While there are many great videos uh, from different YouTubers out there about how to overcome imposter syndrome or how to beat that, I don't necessarily think that that's something that you have to beat. And I'm gonna explain this in this video. Okay, so first of all, you have to know that imposter syndrome is something that everyone, everybody from the software engineering industry um, has, and not only. So it's not something very unusual to, to have that. Myself, despite having several years in the industry, working on different positions with different teams for different companies, I still have this feeling whenever I'm starting a new job, and not only, because um, for me, it can mostly happen within like a few, few moments. When I would get a raise, when I would be promoted for a new position, or when I would change a company that I'm working for, where I'm conducting a workshop, workshop actually, or I'm, I'm you know, giving some um, talk at a conference. And obviously these opportunities can be mixed. So, so you get a raise, you change position, and you also go, go to another company. So it can make things even more um, stressful. So over time, I realized that there is no an easy way to interfere with my, my emotions. I've been to therapies, I've tried meditation, I've tried visualization and all the like psychological things, but I couldn't find a solution. And whenever I was changing a job, I was still feeling that. So that was not ideal, but I've found something that works for me and maybe it will work for you as well. So here are the three steps that I try to follow when I'm fighting imposter syndrome. So the first step in my case was to reverse my attention from, from the inside, from what I was feeling and how I was feeling about being an imposter to the outside world. So focusing more on what's the next step, how can I bring some value for the company, how can I make them more money, how can I help other, um, other people. So don't focus on how you feel, but just try to focus on what you can do, what, should you, what you should be doing, maybe ship some small feature, maybe work on the story, maybe try to get it over the line as soon as possible. So firstly, you will prove your value, and secondly, you will have things to work on, so you won't be thinking about, hey, I'm an, I'm an imposter and I will, be, I will get fired up. Um, pretty soon. Second step for me was to take a look at things that I have already accomplished in my career. People tend to not look what they have accomplished and they keep thinking that everything they did was quite easy and quite straightforward. So even though if they spent lots of time doing that. So I try to see, you know, where I've been or I've been through you know, how um, how my skills grew over the years and uh, why I'm actually here. I'm also trying to have a look at the inner interview that, uh, you know, someone decided to hire me. So we did, you know, we went through the interview process and it worked, worked really well for both parties. That's why I, um, you know, try to have a look at my past to be sure that I'm in the right place at the moment. I also try to remind myself that someone put me in the position that I'm currently in because of my past accomplishments. If you think about that for a moment, I hope it will make sense for you as well. Number three. Number three uh, step of my um, solution and what makes me feel better is to have a clear understanding of your job requirements and your job responsibilities. So before you join the company or on your first day, it would be great if you could talk to your engineering manager, to your leader or line manager, um, whatever is the name of the people that you're directly reporting to, have a clear situation to be on the same page on what are your job requirements, what you should be doing, what should you focus on, you know, what should the first day, the first week, the first month, and also the first three months look like. So you have um, clear requirements, what you should uh, do, you're totally aware of that. That's how you can both manage their expectations and also focus on the work that you need to be doing at the moment. So guys, if you're interested in that, I would highly recommend this book, The First 90 Days by uh, Michael uh, Watkins. It's a great book that I read every time I'm changing, uh, you know, context of my career. So joining the uh, company or, you know, changing position. It contains lots of great tactics 
on how to get up to the speed faster and smarter, and both for a startup and corporate jobs as, as well. I would highly recommend you um, reading this book if you're interested how to get up to the speed in your first 90 days at the company, and also how to feel less as imposter and more like a um, winning person. Hope it helps. Hope you enjoyed this video and uh, yeah, see you on the next one.